Yeah, I need to take this whole thing apart. Turbojet engine, the first working prototype. Sort of. What do stainless pots, junket, a scrapyard, and 3D printer filament all have in common? Well, with some clever assembly and a good bit of luck, they can make a technically self-sustaining turbojet engine. It doesn't have that much thrust, nor is it the most reliable, but it works, and that's a big deal. I've worked on many electric compressors, but it was clear how much more power was needed to get any amount of usable thrust. After all, this is supposed to be a jet engine. I had a solution. By directly using the combustion exhaust itself to provide the power to the compressor, this was the very definition of a turbine jet engine. Once I got the bearings running smoothly and the starter motor working, I was able to assemble it all for the first test. So what happened? Looking at this simplified internal view, you can see the relative position of the main components such as the starter, the impeller, the stator, and the turbine. As the engine started, the stator got warped by the hot gases causing interference with the turbine wheel. To fix this, I added a spacer in front of the starter motor that prevented the thermal forces from causing the same interference issue again. First things first, it worked. It was able to run on its own if the starter shut off for at least a few seconds before it once again ground itself to an abrupt stop. The issue this time is no longer at the stators, but it has the same root cause, heat warping. This time it's the nozzle warping, making a shape that is supposed to be precisely circular into a bent up mess. Fixing this will require a major teardown. Here I am making sure that the turbine doesn't scrape the new nozzle that I put in place for the next test. What happened in this test? This test was my most successful test, running for about 3 minutes and 24 seconds before it eventually overheated. I was also able to demonstrate the throttling of this engine by adjusting the fuel flow. Still, not everything went well. There were several hot spots that leaked near the new nozzle, and the mild steel nozzle itself quickly oxidized. His oxide flaked away, making sparks in the exhaust and weakening the nozzle. What finally ended its last test was the damage to the stator and bearings. The rear bearing was completely seized, and the stator was so oxidized that it was missing a couple of guide vanes. 
This rendered the engine inoperable, but probably saved the turbine wheel, which would be harder to replace. Speaking of getting parts, how much did this engine really cost to build? Looking at all the parts within the engine itself, not counting the test stand, this engine cost just under $200 to build. However, some of the parts that were purchased as scrap would be much more expensive if they were new. The first part that could be improved is the combustor liner, adding annular swirl holes and film cooling to prevent hot spots. Using better bearings and actively cooling them would definitely help it last longer as well. The stator should have been made out of a thicker piece of 316 stainless instead of 304 stainless because of its better heat resistance. The last part that needs improvement is the nozzle. It needs to be much thicker with film cooling to prevent it from warping so much under the heat. The fuel also needs to be changed. Propane is super easy to use, but it burns too hot. I repeatedly measured exhaust temperatures in excess of 900 degrees Celsius, which is much too hot for most metals to withstand. Using kerosene or true jet fuel would have a much cooler flame temperature, but be harder to use and ignite. This engine was a good proof of concept and served as a learning tool, teaching me a lot about turbine engines. With a more refined design and better heat distribution, I could eventually get a version that is reliable enough to use on remote control aircraft or other vehicles. Considering that commercial turbine engines are several thousand dollars, it is remarkable that such a simple engine actually worked as well as it did. It is now in its rightful place where all the learning experiences go.